Hello, friends. This is Evangelist Scott Pauley. I'm so happy that you are joining our broadcast today. Several years ago, when we first began the Enjoying the Journey broadcast, we started with my favorite book of the Bible. I've adopted it really as my life's study on the book of Philippians. And the theme, of course, of that great book is the joy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, truly, it is the, the Bible treatise on what it means to enjoy the journey. And now, we're thrilled to share this anniversary series with you again in the hopes that God will use it in your life to help you learn to enjoy the Lord Jesus Christ at whatever stage you happen to be on on life's journey. I trust that these studies from the Word of God today will refresh your spirit and renew your strength for the days ahead. God bless you as you listen. Do you have a favorite verse of Scripture? For me, that is a very relative question because the truth of the matter is, it's all the Word of God. It's all wonderful. And at different junctures on the journey, God uses verses in definite ways in your heart and life. Now, through the years, there's one verse in Philippians chapter 2 that God has used in my life in an amazing way. Now, we've been studying through Philippians chapter 2, and I briefly touched on this verse. But before we move on to Philippians chapter 3, I want to stop. Will you allow me just to pause today and zero in on one verse? Because this verse, I believe, is the secret to it all. It's the secret to giving God glory. It's the secret to knowing the joy of the Lord in your own life. It's the secret to being a blessing to other people. It's a secret to life and to labor. It's found in Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 13. And I would encourage you not only to look at this verse today, but memorize it, commit it to memory. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. We memorize Scripture to meditate on Scripture. And this is a verse you should meditate on often. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13 says, For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of His good pleasure. What an amazing verse. Permit me to read it again. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. To me, this verse answers all of the chief questions of life. The first question is, who is it that's working in my life? Well, the answer to that question is, it is God. It's not your pastor. It's not another family member. It's not another human being. Oh, the Lord may use somebody like that. He may use a Bible teacher. He may use a coach or he may use a close friend. But behind all of that, God himself is trying to work in your life. He's working in you at this moment. And what is he working in you to do? It is God which worketh in you both. That's a powerful word. Both to will and to do. In other words, God works first to give you the desire to do the right thing. And then the same God who gives you the desire also enables you to do what it is you desire to do. Now that's, that's powerful because there's both a principle and a promise wrapped up in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. And it is this, the same God that creates in you a hunger and thirst after righteousness is the God that will fulfill that in your life. Now, the same Lord that gives you the desire to pray will then enable you to pray. Now, the same God that gives you a burden uh, to witness to someone, to share the gospel, will then empower you as you obey the Lord, as you act on that desire. I'm thinking now of Psalm 37, verse 4, where David wrote, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and He shall give thee the desires of thine heart. That doesn't mean you get what you want. It means you get what He wants. He puts His holy desires inside of you. And then the next verse, verse 5 of Psalm 37 says, Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. In other words, just another way of saying that the same God that works in you to will works in you to do. And then we come to the crux of the entire verse. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. And can I suggest to you today that all of life for a follower of Jesus Christ comes down to these three words. This is the bottom line. 
Why am I alive today? What am I to live for today? What is my purpose in this world? In a phrase, it is His good pleasure. Each one of those words is significant. For example, notice the little word, His. It reminds us of what God deserves. Who is it uh, that we live to please? The one who gave everything for us. After all He's done for me, can I not live for Him? After He sacrificed Himself, do I not want to live my life as a response to that love by saying, Lord Jesus, I want You to have all of me? The next verse, verse 14, says, Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Can I tell you, I meet a lot of Christians who are going through the motions of doing all the Christian things, all the right things, but they're fussing and grumbling and complaining all the way through it. Why is it? Because they've never learned the secret of Philippians 2.13. When you realize who it is that you're trying to please and you consider all that He's done for you, friend, there is no sacrifice in our obedience. There is nothing we're really giving up to give ourselves to Him. And it helps you to live joyfully on this journey without murmurings and without disputings. We're reminded of what God deserves. It is His good pleasure. And then we're reminded not only of what God deserves, we're reminded of what God desires, His good pleasure. You see, my purpose in this world is not my pleasure, it's His pleasure. I remember as a boy growing up, my dad preaching a sermon at a critical time in our lives, a time where my dad was going through a great struggle. And I remember him weeping as he preached the message. And I don't remember his outline. I only remember one thing he said because he said it repeatedly. He said this, All I want to do is please God. Now, the Holy Spirit has brought that to my mind again and again. As I grow older and as I deal with more, wouldn't it be great if I got up every day and said, All I want to do today is please God. If I faced every difficulty, every struggle in life, thinking all I want to do is please God. Friend, that's what God desires from you. And that's what God desires for you. It is His good pleasure. But then please don't miss this. In these words, we're reminded not only what God deserves and what God desires, we're also reminded of what God does. Don't miss the word good. The Bible calls it His good pleasure. Good for who? Good for Him and good for me. You see, God makes it so that when I please Him, I find pleasure in that. Isn't it beautiful? What contentment, what completeness, what joy is found in serving Jesus Christ. Oh, you can live for yourself today if you want to. You can have what Hebrews 11.25 calls the pleasures of sin for a season, but that's very temporary. Or you can have what the psalmist called in Psalm 16.11 when he said, In thy presence there is fullness of joy, and at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Let me ask you, do you want the pleasure of sin for a season, or would you like his pleasures forevermore? Because if you'll live today for his good pleasure, you, friend, will find pleasure in that. There's no joy like the joy of serving Jesus Christ. It is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We are grateful you've joined us for this study today. If you love the book of Philippians, be sure to visit our website, enjoyingthejourney.org, and download the audio book of Philippians. Scott also has a full sermon series through Philippians that we believe will be an encouragement to you as well. And until next time, may the joy of Jesus help you enjoy the journey.